This is the characteristic Huerta of Valencia. These lands are still irrigated by canals inherited from the Moors, whose culture contributed its ceramic skills to the region, particularly in the towns of Paterna and Manises. This artistic inheritance has served as a permanent source of inspiration for Mestre the artist, from his boyhood until today. I'd like to describe how I make one of my pieces. But before that, I'd like to show you some of the books where I keep my ideas, my sketches. From these books, I choose the most attractive or challenging idea. In this case, I've decided to work on a piece with an architectural structure. As soon as I have the structure worked out, I make a full-scale ground plan and front elevation, as you can see in these templates. If the structure is complex or difficult, I make volumetric models so that I can see the inner spaces clearly. And then I add all the details which are too complex to represent on the ground plan and front elevation. After this, when all the details have been worked out, I start making the clay slabs which I use to build the structure itself. In his studio, in the heart of the fertile Valencian Huerta, Enrique Mestre applies exacting scientific techniques in the creation of his artistic ceramic pieces. This is the base of the structure. Now I'm going to make beveled edges. I make beveled joints because if I just paste the edges together, the joints will be too noticeable after firing. Here, just like in woodworking, the mesh goes in the same direction. There is nothing against the grain. This provides a perfect finish. The artist takes pains to control each step in the long creative process, starting from the preparation of the raw material. In the early stages of construction, Mestre uses clay slabs which are carefully cut and pasted together using slurry, a mixture of the same clay diluted with water. As soon as I close up part of the piece, I make air holes so that air can circulate freely. If there are any air pockets, the whole piece might explode during firing. The best thing to do is to make them as you go along, not wait until the end, because we don't want any closed spaces inside the piece. Once the construction is complete, he patiently works the edges of the piece, polishing or roughening, creating the textures he wants on each surface.
A slip is sometimes applied over some surfaces. This is a clay mixture that masks the color of the underlying clay or even changes its texture. Once the piece is terminated, a long drying process is required to eliminate all humidity slowly and carefully. In this way, no cracks or tears will occur either during drying or the firing process. Firing is the process that will completely change the physical and chemical characteristics of the piece. In this case, firing was done in a gas kiln at a temperature of up to 1,280 degrees Celsius, which is the appropriate firing temperature for the stoneware clay used in this piece. When the kiln was at 900 degrees Celsius, a strong reduction was produced by closing all the air inlets and injecting gas into the kiln. This generated a great deal of smoke and produced significant changes in color. This is part of the process of mastering fire used by Mestre for the achievement of colors and textures that coincide with his particular concept of creating ceramic pieces. The outcome, however, does not always produce the results the artist expects. As Mestre says, the gods of fire also play their part.
Bueno, aquí well, está la pieza terminada. this is the finished piece. Ahora, After a third firing, it looks more interesting. The two previous firings were higher reduction firings, and the piece came out with lots of black spots on it. Interesting effects, but not exactly what I was expecting. Thanks to the soft tones, we are better able to see the shape of the piece. The matte pinkish colors contrast with the rough outer surface. Just to make sure, I'll observe it for a few days to see if it passes the test of time. If not, I'll try again with a fourth firing, trying to achieve the effects I'm looking for. Faithful to his original aim, Mestre fired this piece several more times using different techniques and new slips in order to achieve the ideal result he envisaged from the start. In conjunction with other works, we can guess at the influence played by the forms of his immediate environment, the setting, what Mestre metaphorically calls the geometry of the huerta. Here we have the final piece. After another few firings, it seems to have improved a lot. I think I've fired it about six times in all. After the last one, the surface definition has increased, the colors and textures have improved. And I hope, after a few days of reflection, I'll see whether it passes a, a final screening, because I demand a lot from my pieces. If it passes, I'll consider it to be finished. And if not, I'll try again until I obtain a piece with something mysterious about it, either in color or in quality. That's all I can say about this piece. Frankly, I ended up working with ceramics by chance. First I studied fine arts. I took up painting. After that I worked in graphic design for 10 or 12 years. And I finally started studying ceramics, as I said, by chance. Once I had entered the field of ceramics, I realized all the possibilities I had with a medium like this. It's so rich in aspects like color, texture, and above all, it reacts so differently when being fired. Transformation in the kiln is simply incredible. An object can change from being absolutely neutral to a state that represents an infinite wealth of tones and nuances. This is what really captured my interest in this form of art. I have to say that out of the three main areas of ceramic manufacturing, handicraft, designing more or less practical wares, 
or the purely creative. It is the creative side that has always interested me the most. That doesn't mean to say that the two first areas are of no interest to me, but after working in graphic design, I wanted to dedicate my time exclusively to creative aspects. And creative ceramics gave me the opportunity to do so. The difference between expressing things through the medium of ceramics or through painting or sculpture lies basically in the fact that during sculpting or painting you see your creation as it progresses. You are conscious of colors, textures and shapes. But when we work with ceramics, we never see the real color of the piece. We have to imagine, we have to calculate, we have to be very rational. We sometimes have to use numbers and formulas to calculate the colors we are trying to get. This is the true challenge of ceramics. A ceramic artist should control the medium to perfection, although when the pieces are placed in the kiln, it is always the fire that has the last word. That is where the changes may occur. Finally, I'd like to say that the medium of ceramics, from my point of view, has a lot to do with optimum quality, with truly noble materials. In the traditional sense, we say gold is a noble metal because it is unaffected by acid, it's hard, it's durable. Ceramics have similar qualities. They may be fragile, but they are practically unalterable over time. As proof of this, we can look at archaeological pieces that tell us about the history of mankind, of Mesopotamian cultures three or four thousand years ago. When these pieces are cleaned, they look as if they have been fired yesterday, almost like new. This is one of the major advantages that ceramics has compared to other materials. They are almost unalterable and they present optimum possibilities for creative work. Para un trabajo plástico y creativo.